government. Write this down. The essence of government is law. Please remember this. The essence of government is law. Now, governments do a lot of things, and you think, you know, that these things are important. But the most important thing a government does is to debate and legislate and pass laws. Right now, we got some uh, legislation in the front of our parliamentarians right now dealing with some important issues. And some of you may not know the power of what's going on. That's why you got to say something because they are about to create law. <laughs> when you think of government, you must think about law. This is why people who are hungry for power in a country want to get into the Congress or the House of Assembly. Because these are the bodies of authority that create legislation that becomes law. So everybody wants to control lawmaking. At least a point number two, write it down. Whoever controls or creates the law creates the nation. Never ignore people who are fighting for laws. Some of you are wondering why, for example, there are so many people in our countries around us now who are trying to fight for laws to protect same-sex marriages, for example. Now, that is not to be taken lightly. They don't care about your prayer meetings. They don't care about your debates in the church. They want to make sure it becomes law. Because once it becomes law, then the nation becomes a nation of that kind of relationship. Government is about law, and law creates the nation. That leads me to point number three. Law creates and controls culture. What did I say? Law creates and controls culture. So a nation becomes what it will become based on the laws that are created by the people in power. And that group is called the government. They govern the nation by laws. And the law produced the culture. That leads to point number four. So the first thing God gave Moses when he wanted to create a nation out of slaves was law. God gave Moses law before he gave him land. Because <laughs> God knew that if you get land without law, you can have a lawless land. And you cannot regulate land unless you have law. So God gave Moses law first. Then the people got land afterwards. That leads to point number five. Whoever controls the formulation of law controls the quality of the nation. Whoever controls what? The formulation of law. They will control the quality of a nation. Again, you wonder why people want to stay in the position of power. Because when you're in a position of power to create and influence the regulation of a country, you are actually controlling the quality of the country, the values of the country. You're controlling the moral standards of the country. And that leads to point number six, which I think is very serious. The rule of law is at the mercy of those who rule the law. That's a Miles Monroe quote. You tweet that right now to somebody. I'm going to say it again. The rule of law is at the mercy of those who rule the law. Democracy, for example, prides itself on being a philosophy of the rule of law. And what they mean by that is uh, the law rules the country. But we forget that the law that rules the country is created by men who rule the law. So because you say the law rules the country doesn't mean that you can have the right country. Because you might have the wrong law ruling the country. That's how dangerous governments are. Governments can actually rule the rules. They can actually change the rules. Uh, they got the power to legislate and agitate for even the changing of a constitution. Because once you rule the law, and then the law can rule you. 
So yes, we are about the rule of law, but the question is, who's ruling the law? They can change the law. You ever wonder why the Bible calls the laws of God statutes? Do you know why it's called statutes? The word statute, the same word as character, it's like that statute that you have in the middle of your town. Uh, there's a lady in our country, downtown, she's been sitting there all my life, and many of you were born, and she was there. You'll die, she will still be there. She's been there for over, almost 180 years. She never moved, eh? She's called what? Statue. God used that term for his word, his law. He said, my law are statutes. That means you don't change them by vote. You don't adjust them by any act of human ingenuity. That woman sitting in our square, her name is what? Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria. She's been through every hurricane in the Bahamas. Am I right? And never moved. In other words, the currents around her were flowing. But she withstood all the currents. And when the currents were over, she's still the same person. You see, there are a lot of, you know, you ever heard this, uh, uh, this statement? Uh, uh, what, is, what is current in your society? A lot of things are currents. That means they come to move you. And governments need to recognize which laws should not be moved. And the only laws that you can guarantee that should not be moved are the ones you get from the Creator. And there are some things the Creator has put in place, and we are tampering with them. Now, I learned something years ago. If you go downtown to that woman, Queen Victoria, and you say, I hate you, and you ball your fists, and you punch her in her face with all your might, because you want to change her, what would happen to your fists? You'll be a bloody mess. Do you know why? No matter what you do, she doesn't go with you. You go with her. You don't break her, she breaks you. All principles and laws are that way. You don't break the laws of God. You break yourself on them. No matter how much we try to change set laws of nature, set laws of physiological facts and truth, we are going to be broken, not the laws. And this is why I don't panic when I see people uh, attempting to shout at God in his face and say to God,